Hello and welcome to my channel. Do you have a DT4 system set that is skipping so badly that it acts like it want to shut off when you put it in gear? Well, I have a number two bad injector and I'm going to show you how to replace that. If you are not a subscriber, do not forget to subscribe and hit that little button over to your right and become a subscriber right away. So let's get started. On the top of the hose, we're going to use a level millimeter. Now I'm over on the passenger side of the vehicle and I'm going to remove the other end of that hose at the turbo. And again, you need a 13 millimeter socket with a ratchet to do so. Guys, I like to put a rag, I like to put a rag over this, this hose because the last thing I want is something to actually fall into it. And I'm just going to take a zip tie and just put around it. Now I'm going to remove the ECM. I'm just going to move it to the side. You don't have to actually disconnect and just move it completely out the way. And then there's going to be some washers here. Three washers. And there was three nuts to actually hold on the ECM. Just going to remove those. And next, what I'm going to do is just remove the AC compressor. I'm going to move it to the side and leave it connected. So in order to remove the AC compressor, just move it to the side. I'm going to have to release the tension off the, the AC belt. And I need a half inch. I'm going to use a breaker bar. You can use a half inch ratchet. And I'm just going to loosen it so I can actually take the belt off. There we go. We have four bolts to remove for the AC compressor. We have two bolts on the opposite end. On the bottom, three eight bolts. And we have two three eight bolts back here that would be much easier to get to versus these two up here. So I have removed these two on the bottom, now I'm just going to remove these two and move the compressor to the side, out the way. And last but least, there's three holes I like to cover, and you've seen the last two. And this one here, although I'm going to remove the valve cover, but I don't want to mistakenly drop anything inside of it and not know about it. You don't want that. To remove the tensioner bolt, I'm going to use a 5.8. Just screw this out. Take out this last bolt and just pick right up on the compressor. And we're just going to move it to the side. So now I'm going to remove the two bolts that holds on the AC bracket 
and I'm going to use a 15 impact socket. I'm going to use an impact gun. And when I go back with these bolts, when I tighten them back in place, I'm going to make sure that you actually torque them because if one tighter than the other, this bracket is notorious for breaking bolts. Both of the bolts have to be tightened evenly. Then we're gonna remove our bio cover bolts. You need a 10 millimeter socket. Well, it won't take you long to discover, you're gonna have two different size uh, bio cover bolts. Now that we have all our bio cover bolts removed, I need to remove the, the bolt for the crankcase pressure tube. And we need a 15 millimeter. I believe there's a bolt on the bottom end of it. I'm going to remove that one also and just get it completely out of the way because I'm going to need as much room as possible to get this file cover off. We're going to break the bottom bolt loose. Again, we need a 13 millimeter. And this tube, this bolt is going to be in between the tube and the oil filter. This is what you want. You just want your tube out the way. And I would definitely leave that bolt connected because it's kind of a little aggravating to get to it unless you're gonna remove your oil filter. Now we're gonna lift up on the uh, valve cover. Guys, you may ask yourself, and ladies, you may ask yourself, uh, which injector is what? So, number one is going to be the first one, and you work your way on down, two, three, four, five, six. So, in case you just want to replace a particular one, number three, number two, number one, that's how you determine. So, just work your way from the front to the back. Any kind of trash or anything can fall in here. We're just going to put some rags up against here, just for some insurance. Last thing you want is you do all that hard work and something happened and you try to figure out why and because of a boat or trash. So what I'm going to do, there's a ring here, a little clip, just going to pull back on it and then just slide a harness straight down. Next I'm going to use a 8 millimeter remove the bolt Next, after we remove the, the bolt from the injector, we're still gonna need an eight millimeter socket. And we're gonna to have to remove the, the wire harness rail. So this is a rail. So we're gonna to have to actually remove it from each injector. And so we can just move this rail out of the way so we can actually get the uh, priority injector up. We have six bolts to actually remove for the wire harness. I like to take a Jesper wrench and just move it back and forth. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to drain the fill and the oil out of the, the oil rail here. Because if not, when I pull out injector, it's just going to just go right into that area where the injector came out from and it's just gonna be a mess sometimes i try to pump out as much as i can but in this case normally i do all the injectors but i'm just gonna do one so uh i'm gonna just drain out just to save myself a little headache and keep in mind when you get ready to start up this vehicle 
your vehicle, uh, your oil rail has to have a certain amount of oil in it to build up pressure for your engine to actually start. So it's not going to start right away if you drain out your uh, oil rail. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use a 1 and 16 wrench. And I put a drain bucket right on the bottom end of the uh, ICP sensor. And as you can see, the, the oil is actually coming out. And one thing you want to do, you want to inspect this O-ring for the, the harness here that actually goes through the valve cover. Now that we have all the bolts removed from the wire harness, we can just move it to the side and pry up on the injector. All right, this is what we have here. This is the injector. That's the part number that you need. And there is a core on this. And you're gonna put the old one back in this bag here. So they they pretty much gave you everything that you need. The first item, what we want to do is just start at the top. And the first item they calling for the upper backup ring, which is steel. And this is what we have here. We have, this is the only steel, so that make it pretty easy. Just gonna put this on first, the steel. And you can pretty much walk it up, walk around with your finger, or if you got a snap ring pliers, you can uh, actually use that, but I don't think we're gonna need that. I'm just gonna walk it on up here. You definitely don't wanna break it. There we go. That's what you want. Next item. Let's see, upper custom ring black. Let's see, I'm assuming that it says black. And it shows the, the diagram. So it has that O-ring round type and you have another black O-ring that's actually, it's flat. So we're gonna put that one in, let's see here. Number two, the black one. Number two, actually, is going to be the flat black. So, so this is more like the the round type, and this is the flat black. So this is going to be next. We're going to use this. So let's go ahead and just put this one in here, and just pretty much just peel it on up there. And once you get it up there, just flatten it out. It don't hurt to have a little screwdriver, but I'm gonna use my my nail through my gloves. All right, so now we got the black one there. Next, uh, let's see here. It says dark blue, so actually the regular type O-ring is actually dark blue. So we're gonna go ahead and put that in next. That's number three. Put it all the way up here. So we are finished with the first section. So we have one, two, three. So we have all three items here. Now we're gonna to go to the next section, number four. Number four is calling for the middle seal pink. 
That's pretty easy. Now this one here, this one you may, it may take a little time, more time than the rest, but it's really no big deal. So we're gonna do it like we did the rest. Just press it on down, and kind of walk it in. Oh, that went in much easier. Okay, so that's number four. Uh, let's see here, number five. Only thing that's left is number five is going to say the lower O-ring orange. So hey, it's it's the only orange O-ring we have. So that's going to go right here. Let's go ahead and just put that in there. Now, last but least, at the bottom you have a injector gasket. Now what I'm gonna do here, I remember years ago, there used to be a, a certain position that they wanted you to install this, this gasket. But I'm going to, uh, and now it seems like it doesn't really matter that much. But what I'm gonna do is use a, a small socket, a socket that will actually just will not damage the, uh, the tip. And I'm just going to put it on the the gasket and use a hammer. Just tap it down. All right, so that's what it looks like inside of the uh, the walls of the injector. Then we're going to put the injector in. Now the instructions say uh, you can put grease on this. Uh, Sometimes I put just a little engine oil on it. I just wipe some, put on my finger, and just put a little engine oil on the uh, seals, the O-rings, and just slide it back into place. And just want to slide this back inside of the uh, the hole here, where we took out the old one. There we go. There we go. Put our bolt back in place. Now we're gonna hook up our wiring harness. There we go. Just gonna make sure all the bolts are tightened down for the, the wiring harness rail. Well, I took time to actually wipe off my bow cover gasket, and these gaskets made to last a lifetime, pretty much. Now will be a good time to actually uh, check your your bow clearance if you need to do so. You need to be careful with it. So we're just gonna leave it like this, and we're going to just want to make sure you put this harness back into the hole here. And once we get it in there, get it in the right position, then we just 
push it all through. I'm just gonna put this tube back in place with a new O-ring. And then we're gonna put our bolts back in place on top and on the bottom of the tube. Tighten down our ECM nuts. put back on our LCP sensor and we're going to put it right back down here on the oil rail. I'm going to put my 1 16 wrench back on it and tighten it up. Put back on my clamp. Now we're gonna reconnect the battery. Keep in mind, our engine's not gonna start up right away, basically because we drain out the engine oil rail. And we drain that out before we pull out the injector. So just keep that in mind and just have patience. Once it fills up, the engine will start. is a lot stronger already. Before it had a real bad miss, a bad skip. Now I can tell it's beating on all six cylinders. Six. That's what we want. Fuel injection, beating, fired on all six. Well, that's all you have to do to replace your fuel injector. If it's low on power or has no acceleration or it skips real bad and it tells you that a injector need to be replaced, go ahead and find out which one needs to be replaced and replace that injector. This video, I hope it helped you to do it step by step. And thank you for watching. Do not forget to subscribe. If you like it, give it a thumbs up. Take care and God bless.